Hello and welcome to this overview of new releases that I read that were published in November 2023. I'm Olivia, your new favorite resource for book recommendations you can easily screenshot. You're watching Random Olive Reads. First up is Some Winter's Evening by Erin Langston, which is related to her novel Forever Your Rogue. We get to see Cora's barrister brother Gavin find his match in this holiday novella. Gavin is struggling with an ethical dilemma in whether or not to represent some unsavory client in attempts to boost his own chances at a promotion. While he is stressed out and mulling this over, he's also on his way to his sister's house for the holidays and ends up at an inn due to a snowstorm. Amelia is also stuck at the inn overnight on her way to her new governess position and meets Gavin. They share a lighthearted night together with the no exchange of last names or contact information. Luckily, though, Amelia is on her way to being the governess of Gavin's very own nephew, so they meet again a couple days later when Gavin shows up at the house. They try to stay away from each other at first since she needs to keep her job and he needs to focus on being an upstanding gentleman, but that doesn't last very long, especially as Gavin's brother-in-law, the ever-charming Nate, catches on to their obvious feelings for each other. From there, we get to see the uptight and serious Gavin learn to let loose and go with his emotions rather than strict adherence to logic. His caretaking and worry for Amelia is also delightful to read and fun to see the boisterous family dynamics of the house and the affection between Gavin and his sister. A Rose Blooms in Brooklyn by Jenny B. Moore is book three of the Flower Sister series. The beautiful and spoiled Rose has not had a success of her many seasons in London. Now she faces a pending engagement to a man she doesn't love or to serve as a companion to an elderly relation. She told her parents that she's bound for Boston to reconcile with her twin sister, but she's really headed to New York City to enjoy the high society her cousin lives within. She is shocked to learn that her cousin is living in Brooklyn, estranged from her family, and working to support herself. Rose is completely out of her element and has to adapt to very unfamiliar surroundings. Ben is a widower and political activist who owns the building where Rose has landed and pretty much scoffs at Rose's uh, naivete. He's also uncomfortably attracted to each other to her even though his heart is all sorts of closed off after the death of his wife in childbirth. The romance between Rose and Ben involves a lot of push and pull, with Rose realizing that she has been completely sheltered all her life and with Ben learning to embrace life and joy again. Running through the entire book is the opposition towards laws that prohibit the distribution of contraception and the movement for women's suffrage. We get to admire Ben's selfless dedication to the cause, as well as Rose's increased awareness and understanding of these matters. This was a great read with lots of support from Ben's friends and sort of found family. Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood is a young adult contemporary romance and a standalone novel. Mallory hasn't played chess in years since it seemingly caused the implosion of her family. Now she's a high school graduate working to support her disabled mother and two younger sisters. Her best friend convinces her to join a charity chess tournament, and she somehow wins against Nolan, the reigning world champion and top-ranked chess player. Mallory is completely overwhelmed and runs away. Soon after that, Mallory is offered a well-paying fellowship to study and play chess with the hopes of entering upcoming chess competitions. While she tries to maintain some emotional distance from the sport, it all comes back to her even though she's hiding her chess involvement from her family. Once we start heading out in the world of chess tournaments, we get more awkward meetings with Nolan and meet a bunch of his friends. While a lot of the actual chess playing went over my head, the banter between Mallory and Nolan is really entertaining, plus Nolan's interactions with Mallory's younger sisters. He's clearly impressed and intrigued by her, even though she doesn't see it and totally denies it. The romance aspect is sweet and fun, and while sex does happen, it is closed door. We get to see these two people open up to each other about their family secrets and traumatic histories, and ultimately find a way to have fun, even in spite of all the drama that surrounds them. Never Wager with a Wallflower by Virginia Heath is book three of the Marywell Sister series. 
Venus and Galahad have been at odds with each other since their first meeting without any real reason. However, things will get a lot messier when Galahad purchases the property next door to Venus's orphanage to build his new gambling hell. With a negligent wastrel father, Venus has very little tolerance for vice and believes the worst of Galahad. Add in Venus's general distrust of men and her own reaction, she is constantly wary of Galahad's attempts at friendship. Galahad doesn't want a potential war on his doorstep, so he tries to enter a truce and a friendship with Venus before telling her about the gambling hell. Except when they spend more time together, Galahad shows his honorable nature and kindness towards the orphans, which makes Venus kind of fall for him a little bit, but it pretty much all comes crashing down when she learns about the gambling hell and she has to figure out if he's worth forgiving. Project Duke by Mariah Stone is book three of the Dukes and Secrets series. Lady Calliope has no interest in marriage since she's so independent and outspoken and has goals of opening her own sleuth agency. However, when the dastardly Marquess, who hurt her many years ago, announces his intentions to marry her, she needs to find a protector in pretty short order. She's hoping to gain information to rescue her missing older brother, but ends up entangled with Nathaniel, a handsome but impoverished duke. His late father has been trying to dictate his actions by withholding his inheritance until Nathaniel marries and provides an heir, and time is running out. Nathaniel proposes a marriage of convenience to Calliope in exchange for assisting her in finding her brother. Although these two are very much attracted to each other, their personalities are completely ill-suited. Calliope is brash and independent, and she's always getting herself into danger, while Nathaniel has emotional scars from being unable to protect his mother from danger, so he just kind of wanna, wants to wrap his wife in cotton wool and keep her completely safe from harm. I found both characters a little irritating in their inability to empathize with the other partner stance. However, we slowly uncover more information about Calliope's miss missing brother and continue, continue to interact with her warm and loving family. Bed Me Earl by Felicity Niven is book three of the Bed Me book series. Caroline decides to bed her longtime crush Phineas when he's at her country home with her brother's hunting party. The easygoing Finn is delighted that a woman has come to his bed and he thinks he's got the best luck ever. When he realizes that he slept with his friend's sister and that he might be forced to marry her, he thinks, well, that actually wouldn't be such a hardship. Of course, Finn says this out, li out loud to Carol and upsets her in the process. Despite all this, Finn has decided that he wants to pursue Carol and dismisses all his mistresses when he gets back to London. Carol was really just looking for a one-night thing and doesn't aim for any type of relationship because her lisp and stutter were cruelly disparaged by her father and she's been hiding away in the country this whole time. She has no interest in letting anyone know about her condition or seeing pity or more disparagement. After her father's death, her brother brings her to London, hoping to make up for his neglect over the years, and there she finds an eager Finn wanting to court her. There's a lot of back and forth here as Caro tries to push Finn away, but their physical attraction is much too strong and gets them into trouble. Even though Finn gives the impression of a confident and charming man, we see hints of his insecurity every time Caro rejects him. And when we finally do see them settle down together, we get to see Caro step up and take charge of the household with utter confidence. I really liked seeing this side of Caro. A, even if it leaves Finn questioning his own worth and competence. Her Princess at Midnight by Erica Ridley is book two of the Regency Fairy Tale series. This is a Cinderella retelling where our dear Cynthia is enthralled by the prince's sister, Amalia. We get Amalia serving as both fairy godmother and love interest when she comes to see Cynthia before the ball to bring her a gown and slippers. Even though Cynthia has captured the prince's interest, she runs away from him because she's clearly not into men. Quick, this one is a quick read and lots of fun. The Duchess Gamble by Sophie Darling is book two of the All's Fair in Love and Racing series. The widowed Duchess Celia is concerned with running her horse racing operation and is disappointed when a potential engagement to a wealthy duke doesn't pan out. 
She's also concerned about her own security when she finds out that the solicitors have found her late husband's heir. Gabriel is a distant relation to the late Duke and hardly believes that he's now the Duke, but he figures he'll take this opportunity to launch his younger sisters into society. When he first meets Celia, he thinks that she's a title-hungry socialite since she had married a much older man, but he changes his stance pretty quickly once he gets to know her better. With Celia wanting to keep her stables operable, she and Gabriel come to an agreement where he will finance her stables in exchange for her help with his sisters. It's interesting to see the sparks between Celia and Gabriel and their ultimate affair. However, Celia doesn't think she's good enough to be Gabriel's wife, mostly due to her mistreatment from her late husband and her father. It is nice to see Celia slowly start to trust Gabriel and his thoughtful treatment of her. Never Met a Duke Like You by Amelie Howard is book two of the Taming of the Dukes series. There is lots of banter and bickering here between Vesper, the daughter of a duke, and Aspen, the duke next door and former childhood friend. Somehow these two had a falling out as teenagers grew apart and then Aspen spurned Vesper at her debut ball. Now it's many years later, Aspen has been off looking for fossils and now he's back in England to deal with his wretched mother. Despite multiple offers of marriage, Vesper is still unwed and ruling society with her perfect poise. Aspen believes Vesper to be a spoiled society miss and tries to avoid her, even though he needs her help in preparing his mother's ward for the season. Despite Vesper's outward appearance and reputation, she is still the same outspoken and fiery lady she has always been in the presence of her trusted friends. There's a lot of push and pull between Aspen and Vesper as they fight and kiss and push each other away. Not the Duke You Marry by Jess Michaels is book three of the Kent's Row Duchess series. With both of her widowed friends married now, Bernadette is feeling lonely and undesirable. She expresses her interest in finding a lover to Theo, a childhood friend who she recently reconnected with. His shocked reaction makes her feel horribly rejected and insecure, but she rallies and finds her way to a pleasure club. When Theo spots her there, he tries to emphasize how dangerous her actions are, but really he just lusts after her himself and is conflicted about his feelings. These two go back and forth a bit, but end up having an affair and try very hard not to fall in love with each other. Add in some backstory where Theo had long ago rejected a chance to marry her, and we're just waiting for her to be heartbroken by the revelation. This is, this story has lots of steam and internal revelations without too much external drama. The Earl I Want for Christmas by Colleen Kelly is a standalone novella that you can get at the author's website. Lydia is contemplating accepting a proposal from her latest suitor, the local vicar, when her dashing neighbor and rakish, uh, the rakish Earl Gabriel returns to his estate, she is distracted by the memory of her first kiss with him six years prior. Before committing herself to a boring marriage with the vicar, she proposes an affair with Gabriel to experience passion while she has the chance. Gabriel is definitely not marriage material after being spurned by his previous fiance, but he does want to follow through with Lydia's request. While their affair is definitely very steamy and their expectations are clear up front, we also get to see the honorable side of Gabriel as he interacts with others in town, along with the care and tenderness that he shows Lydia. This was quick to read with lots of spice and heart. Investigating the Duke by Alexa Aston is book eight of the Suddenly a Duke series. This one is the final book of the series where we get to see how a female Bow Street runner Shelby gets to her position. We've seen Shelby at work many times throughout the series, solving cases for the other Dukes, so it's nice to see her prologue here and how she got to that position. This book also features Jasper, a third son of a Duke and Vicar, who suddenly becomes the Duke when his father passes away from illness, his oldest brother drunkenly falls down the stairs, and his second brother dies at war. Now, the timing of his oldest brother's death along with his father's death seems to be suspicious, so Jasper heads to hire a Bow Street runner to investigate. The very accomplished Shelby is assigned to the case, and she sort of infiltrates the household by posing as the new secretary. 
The romance here was pretty straightforward with Jasper deciding pretty quickly that he wants to marry Shelby, but finding out the cause of death and all of that mystery and intrigue was super interesting and kept me really invested in the story. A Lady's Rules for Ruin by Jennifer Haymore is book two of the Lions and Lilies series. Frances is completely uninterested in marriage, despite the meddling of her family members. She decides to put herself in a ruinous situation so that she can finally be an unmarriageable spinster. Her plan works pretty well, with her unwitting kissing partner on a ship bound for Egypt. Frances has the freedom to pursue a variety of interests without the pressure of balls and soirees. One experiment in a charity, in charity work brings her to the boys' orphanage where she is tutoring a child on manners before he meets an important lord. Evan is a charming and amiable earl who has just found out that his father has been financially supporting an illegitimate son, and so he goes to meet the boy. When he's at the orphanage, he quickly realizes that the child has been mistreated and he decides to bring his brother home with him. Luckily, Francis has already formed a bond with the boy and is there to soothe the child's temperament when faced with his new situation. Francis and Evan have interacted with each other before at social events, but Francis was always a little skeptical of Evan's gregarious nature, even though he's always been intrigued by her outspokenness. We get to see Francis and Evan bond over the care of his newfound brothers. Yes, plural. He does find more throughout the story and then develop a friendship and then an affair. I liked seeing Evan take responsibility for his brothers and build a family with them. And then Francis finally figures out how to embrace love and relationships. It Had to Be a Duke by Vivian Lorette is book one of the Liars Club series. Verity is the oddball of her family being sensible and plain rather than an outrageous actor. Faced with an embarrassing situation with her catty neighbor, she makes up a lie that she is engaged to a duke. When Magnus hears a rumor about this from the father of the heiress that he's trying to marry, he runs off to the village where Verity lives to try to settle this issue. Magnus and Verity are long-standing family rivals from a time when Magnus's father lost a lot of money in an investment and Magnus has blamed Verity's father for the swindle. He definitely does not want to be associated with Verity or her family, but he seems to need to rescue her from her own clumsiness and daring. He's also annoyingly stiff and proper and sometimes even mean to her. Of course, he's only mean to her because he's attracted to her and doesn't want to be. They continue a fake engagement so that he doesn't appear outwardly cruel, and he does slowly start to soften towards her. There's definitely a lot of grudge-holding and angry bickering in the story, so it's interesting to see how these two find common ground. Hopefully you were able to pick out a book or two to add to your TBR. Thanks so much for watching this video. Links to all of these books are in the description box. Like and subscribe to get updates, and you can follow me on Instagram at randomolive.